else in time. So I don't know. Maybe my wife didn't sign up yet. But then I said, yeah, I had that email. Uh, I thought that was already taken care of. I better check in. Well, maybe she was one of the ones. I didn't remember mm -hmm. looking names. All right, call this meeting to order. This time we'll have public appeals. Yeah. Here's extra copies I made. <clears throat> I didn't know who would all be there. To whom it may concern, I live at 740. My name is Sandy Cleaver for the for those that don't know me. I live at 741 Harrison Street for the past 31 years. I feel the borough has been lax as far as them taking responsibility for the raw storage backup in my basement. I know they like to tell people they are responsible for their home to the curb as a homeowner. I can see if there is a problem that someone flushes something down the toilet and I have a backup. That is certainly my fault. What I cannot see is how it is my fault if the sewer lines are not big enough to handle any overflows of water. At one time, 741 Harrison Street had a well and septic. When it changed to public water and sewer, I was not the person who planned how the sewer should be tapped into the main line. I bought the house with public sewer, public water and sewer. I have had raw sewerage backup from a water main break, and I have also had it from heavy rains. The first occurrence was September 16, 1999. I believe insurance was not yet available for sewer backup. We had the cost to redo everything at our expense. The second occurrence was April 13, 2002. We did have the insurance, $10,000, plus the borough of Emmaus paid $10,767.20. The third occurrence was August 1, 2007 at 1 a.m. We did have insurance with page $5,000 and the borough paid $5,642. The fourth occurrence was most recent, August 28, 2011. We did have insurance which paid $10,000. Certainly not enough to cover a foot or more of raw storage was in my basement for more than 12 hours. Borough will be getting a full report to submit to their insurance company. Also, the insurance claims that have been paid out this, for this problem certainly explains the increase in premiums. My husband died in 1994, my son George Hoffman and I moved together at 741 Harrison Street. He had a beautiful large bedroom in the basement. He had the family room, which is also located down there, to entertain his friends at football time or baseball games. Well, things do change. He had his space and I had the first floor. We were together yet separated. After the previous occurrence, he said he could not take it anymore being downstairs, not knowing when this would happen again. He has since then moved back upstairs, and again our lives were changed. There you have a home, but cannot utilize it to its fullest because of not knowing when you will have raw storage in the basement again. This whole situation has me very, very upset. This being said, I am not as young as I once was, so stressful situations can take a toll on your health. As a real estate agent, filing, filling out a seller's disclosure for this property would just be awful. I'm getting to the point where I think maybe the borough should buy it back from us. I was recently at the borough to meet with Greg, ne Greg Neely and was shown a check valve that the borough feels would solve this problem. Frank Fox, a local plumber, feels that it may do the job. He gave me an estimate to do the job for $2,500. I feel either the borough should do the job or else pay Frank Fox to do the job. I hope the borough takes quick action on solving this problem once and for all. And then I have attached the receipt from Frank Fox. It was a water main break that did it. There was a very bad water main break on um, Franklin? Franklin. No, Street. it wasn't that one. It was another one, I believe. No, it was Franklin, and it filled the sewer. It filled the sewer line. It was Franklin Street. Because it yeah. wasn't the last water main break they had. Because I went, and when they had that water main break, I said I was thought, don't tell me I'm going to have to go. All of a sudden, I heard water running. I could go call 911. They said they'll report it immediately. I was up there before anybody was. 
anyway, what, what took place was there was a split in that phase, okay. and which obviously dumped a tremendous amount of water, and it must have migrated in into the sewer system because she did have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. that What's what the between Franklin and Kramer? Correct. Yes. And Franklin, I go to Franklin, my house. Yeah. Oh, I go to house. Mm -hmm. um, that would have been about five years ago, maybe. I have all the dates. For that one, no, I mean specific. Okay. okay. I know that I remember a call from you, or I don't speak to you personally, but I remember the one call yeah, from that. Do we know what's causing this? Um, Brett, as I pointed out before, there are. There are there, before, are you the only house that's having this problem, or is it? More there may one. be, a, like, according to how severe it is, I said the last time that I was here for, when my son was here with me, and that would have been the um, 2007, I believe. Yeah. That their time, I said the person at the end of the street had a little bit. They cleaned it up. It wasn't severe. And I said, now, the one, the one time when they had the water main break, five times, three times I called... 911 like in, in five minutes because I had to have the, the fire department there to pump immediately. They came over, they pumped right away that it wasn't as severe damage as the others were. And it's like now not uh, across McCundy Avenue, like not the first house, but the second house had some problems. I don't know if he still does so or there not. Was two, your house plus one other that you know for sure? That, now, I haven't heard anything that he had at the last time. I don't know. I mean, specifically that. Yeah, time. but I, I just look at it. And I was the water main break that one time. Do we cover it with our insurance on, for that other home also? Or yes. Her, or just hers? Okay, with that being said, go ahead. Um, her sewer main that she was connected to comes down Harrison Street, comes down the country avenue, and ties to the 15 inch line in Green Street, which is part of the main corridor that has a backup problem, an overload problem when it rains. Um, as I pointed out to you before, the, the thing that Brad from Hanover Engineering is recommending is to analyze the hydrology of the system in that area to determine what is the correct corrective action. Um, that figure to do that would vary drastically in expense, and he never did really give me a number, except we were talking in the range of twenty to 50000 depending on, uh, it, it's, a, it's a lot of field time and a lot of data collection, and um, so that, that was kind of where it came from that. Jeff, is we, um, Ms. Green's house in, I think, the end of Green Street there? Yes. Do we get other reports? Of, of backups in that area? Um, quite frankly, we have not. Yeah. But the, the areas where we have gotten reports of backups were, uh, well, the police station got this last time. Right. And it had been previously down um, at the corner of 6th of Jubilee. All of that tide dumps into this main uh, area here. But quite frankly, anything west of uh, McCunty Avenue or any of that stretch uh, because your home is it's very curious to me that there's been no other. Now what happens here is I live at the corner, 7, 741 Kanji and Harrison. Across the street, the homes that face on, which will be across from the school parking lot, those there, when I had, when the borough paid out $10,700 for me, they paid out for that second house there, not the first, second house. They paid out $17,000 to them. That's two thousand two. See, yeah. I'm, I'm not aware of that. And that would be one of the homes that are tied to the same line that she's connected but to. the first house, being the mother of that, because they're son right. and the mom. Had no problems. The, the first house has no problems. But she has no water thing downstairs. She has nothing downstairs that water could get into. Because I said, how could it happen to, because I was talking with him, I says, how could it happen to you and not your mom? And then he said, there's no water down here. There's nothing that would have access to bring it no in. Drainage. No drainage. No toilet, no, no toilet. floor drain, no nothing. nothing. 
And that's the one thing I've noticed, Jeff, that the one thing that I've been kind of seeing throughout these, these times of you know, all the rain was, is the, everybody either has a, a sink, a, some kind of, some kind of appliance, a toilet, you know, shower, something, that's when everything's backing up. No, that's I don't believe I that to be the case. No? I believe that provides a place for it to back up. Exactly. Because what happens is, is just like what happened at Alex's house. He had a plug in his in his um, basement, so it didn't come through there. It had to wait till it built up to the height of the toilet, a little bit more head pressure, and then it comes out of the toilet. So that's but I'm still if, saying if it's going to back up. It's not because of that. That just means that it's building up in their piping, and you never really see it. It just goes back away then. Right. So now, I still, understand, but I'm say, still saying that the, the thing is, it's still there's a toilet there's somewhere. Oh in yeah. The basement. Oh on. yeah. It has to have an opening. It has right. to have a floor drain or a sink or a toilet. That's like the common denominator that I'm seeing with all these places. Well, sure. It's got to have an opening to get out. Yeah. If it's just a pipe running up to the top floor of your building where there's a bathroom, the backup hydraulically will reach a level of where it, where it relieves itself, which might be halfway up the wall. Oh, you don't even really know it's there because there's no opening for it to come out. Now, in 31 years, I said it happened four times, and I said it was like why it happens when it does. It's always the increase of that it can't just take any more water. And I just feel that you don't know that. You know, you don't know when that's going to happen. And I just look at it like I feel that if the borough feels that this is a good solution, why can't they do it? Why should the Frank Fox even do it? Well... What the are you referring to the check valve? Yeah. <coughs> what the check valve is, and they make a lot of them. I don't know a whole lot about them, but, but I, I showed her. The yeah. That, that that actually looks like a pretty good device to me. Well, but Frank I don't know looked about at it, it, and he said that you know he doesn't swear by check valves, but he felt that that may correct the situation. What ends up happening is there's a little flapper there, and if the flow tries to come backwards, it can't, and it it they do work. I'm, they're on the market. I know very little about them. I'm sure there's hundreds of different designs. What I liked about that particular one was you could remove the gut, like you would have a pipe that would come up to ground level, and then occasionally you could remove that piece and rinse things off and then just lower it back down in. Um, so it doesn't get clogged up. Yeah. Question I have, Jeff, is if you have the check valve, um, and so you have heavy rings, um, and you have the back, and it is starting to back up, there is someone takes a shower. You would only have your storage and what's in the line. Well, we are we know the whole situation. <laughs> we when it's raining, believe you, we we go if we want to take a shower, we put the stopper in and make it a quick shower, and we don't let any water out because we've been there. We don't wash, we don't run any water that would affect this right. because we're afraid. Yeah, that would be the only drawback where right. they go in. Yeah. If, if you had 15 feet of pipe or 20 feet of pipe, uh, if you dump water in, it, it would it wouldn't be able to get out because the other water has the whole flapper shut. Boy, they keep sewer from. I mean, correct. If you're just oh, yeah. running water, it's water versus right. sewer. Yeah. Right. And then you, once you see it, you know, stop. And you know, it's, it's just, just so horrible. Uh, well, you know, and I, I have water. pictures when I yeah. when I have for the when I bring the other over as far as the curb to the house and everything. Yeah. 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 But be it's here. like it just spews out of the toilet. And you can see toilet paper and all. It's just, you know, it's a horrible way to live. All right. As far as the borough paying for it because of the past history. Well, I think it is clear. So you're, you're putting together something, some kind of. Well, no, no. That this here and the, the other are two different, different things. things. I understand. But in terms of the paying for, for damage is one thing. She was asking today about the two. Right. Yeah, because I, this is, to me is a separate To me, it issue. saves money for the borough, too, because if she has damage and we're paying Can I ask for the, the damage. Did the, his price, do you include the price of that check valve? Yeah. In other words, he said uh, includes a clean check check valve in main sewer line, parts and labor, so he has to excavate. And, and I don't know anything about them. I, what I would suggest is there should be a little investigation into them. Uh, maybe there's some communities around that have used ones that might be better than that one. Like a referral? Yeah, because I, I mean that thing looks okay, but um, I don't, that was just a salesman sample. I, you know, particularly don't care, but when I was shown that, I thought to myself, geez, I wish I would have used something like this here years ago. 
Because believe you me, I said when I go downstairs, I am so depressed right now. And I take pills, so as it is for depression and stuff. And I says when I go down there, and my whole basement is still uprooted. I says the insurance, our end of it, the, the insurance did come as quickly as it always had in the past. So I said because they had so much more claims. So it's like, you know, now somebody was supposed to come over and, and hopefully I'd get it done before Christmas, but I said, it's, it's been a nightmare. I said, I haven't been washing at home. I've been going to the laundromat. One thing that I think, and again, I, don't, I know very little about these devices, but uh, in, in a sewer line, you have solids along with liquid. Right. So you have the potential for blockages wherever it passes through this check valve. So this is a maintenance item that regardless it needs to be flushed out or something. Flushed out. Maybe, maybe it's a garden hose down. I, I'm sure different ones say what you should do, but there is probably some sort of periodic uh, attention required. Not a lot, not a lot, I don't believe, but. Right, because I said I also have a ball one in my floor drain, and the plumber said that with something like that, some people swear by it, but when they get like stuff, yeah. not keeping it lubricated, yeah. that it sticks. Yeah. So you don't know. Maybe we just have Jeff take a look at it. In the meantime, you know, see how many hours of like, I don't know if it's something our guys would be able to do. Well, it would, it's absolutely something that our guys could do. Um, and um, just purchase it. Right? I, I think we should just do some investigation into which device would make sense. Um, but you're talking about um, you know, digging a hole in her front yard. Uh, yeah, he, you know, he said excavation and, and everything was the 2500 Yeah, so. Okay, so we'll move forward with that, and uh, hopefully we can get those answers as soon as possible. Okay. And, the first time it's ever happened with 99, uh -huh. was in the years before that, you were there since... 80. 1980. I think it was 80 or 81, to tell you the truth. Okay, it was those years, 80 to 99. Was there, was there, I, I think this... I had... Four day obviously was there. Was there a single one, down there? I had a backup, and what that was, was my son and his girlfriend were down, living downstairs, and to be perfectly honest with you, it was rubbers. Uh, yeah, that would do it. <laughs> yeah, and so that's... there was a toilet or... <laughs> there was, you know, that... The toilet, you know, and they had a, but that's what he found, wrote a rooter. Okay, uh, other than that, um, there's not a problem? No, there, there that's what I said. I don't understand what could have happened. It's very curious to me, too, um, in trying to, we've really internally been, yeah. you know, really mulling this over, too. Uh, uh, I really sympathize with what you've gone through, and uh, you know we have not been complacent. We've been trying to figure out the whys of it all. And one thing that's really curious about your particular instance is your where you are and hydraulically. It doesn't make sense why other folks aren't having this same issue. Um, would it require a video? Well, it would require to 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 do this. I mean, there's a tree, right, Jeff? Right, there was. A I know there's one tree that they just cut down, right? Yeah, that yeah, was but the, this, uh, is, this is not is just not local. Know, just it's not local. It, it, it's the line all the way down that has sure. the backup. So it is definitely um, the, 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 an overload of, of groundwater and rainwater in the sewer system, which is backing up because it can't take it. Sure. And so it, it's, um, you know, we're doing our eye and eyes. Uh, work every year and kind of staying after it, but these problems don't go quite quickly. And um, and in this particular instance, to, to look at this section, and you just be looking at a corridor, uh, uh, you wouldn't look at the whole town. Um, you know, could could be very expensive, and I think that's where we are. I think we have to we need to do that. So the short short term solution is trying to get her to valve to prevent backups. Long-term solution is, you know, the, the hydraulic, analyze the hydraulics and whatever we need to do with the system. Uh, I think but in the short term, hopefully we can protect our property with the, the valve. And would you be satisfied yeah. with that? Because I just look at it like, now truthfully, I said, 
once I die and my son goes to sell the property. Now you look at seller disclosure and you have to disclose it. Are you going to be that anxious unless there's a, unless the problem solved? Or they're going to ask for a lot of money off. Yeah, so I mean, it's not fair. Yeah. Well, I, that will be our short term solution. Jeff will look at it, um, maybe make arrangements to have it installed and we'll go from there and hopefully the hydraulic analysis uh, will find out further corrections and uh, that will have to be budgeted because there's a you know multi thousand dollar yeah. projects but i said with uh, my son you know he was downstairs and i was upstairs i'm a light sleeper so it's like and, 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 you know both i'm up so i said it's certainly a lifestyle change you know right. when you have that um, do you know offhand, does your sewer lateral from your home, is it under your driveway or in your grass, or do you know that? You know where my side of my house is. It goes up that way. Okay, so it's in the grass, so it's not necessarily going to be where we dig up your driveway. No, no, okay. no, 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 uh-uh. Yeah, it would go like, here's the chestnut tree, here's my house, and it goes up. Okay. Up that way. Because I says the one time when this happened, Georgie called Roto Rooter, they came in, and the guy said, there's nothing on your property. Uh, would you, are you, you're around most days? I can, you know, I can be uh, around. Well, I think what I'd like to do too is try to do some uh -huh. camera work here and, you know, kind of get some other inf information if that would be okay. That's fine you. with me. I said, I can give you my cell phone and you can, you know, I can make myself available. Okay. I'm take it down. Yeah. Go ahead. 610 390 Okay. Well, uh, I'll be okay. Yeah, you know, Jeff, what Jeff says is absolutely true. We, we, we've been spending time looking through maps and having got pulled animals out there. I mean, we really are trying to. And I believe that. And I said, but it's, it's like it's, it's living the nightmare. It's, 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 it's an odd situation. We looked at a lot of things. And one of the strange things is that um, definitely having this problem with that other one. You know, yes. But there is an overload issue. Yeah, because I'll tell you this here, the last time when it was, I think the water main break, I think it was the 2007, I went up, I was at that meeting when I came over, and uh, everybody on the block had it at that point. In 07? 07. I think I remember that. But there's only one, after me going knocking on everybody's door to come in force here, there was only one at the end of... Uh, the first street past Har uh, on Harris and past um, what you call it is uh, I think Franklin, whatever the first street after me. Well, anyway, the guy that was at the corner of Harrison and Franklin, he came, but everybody else got it. Doctor Hay got it the last two times I had it, but I said if they don't tell us, if they don't tell you, that's not my problem. I don't care about them because the ones like the uh, ones a couple doors up from me. He had it. They had to get new carpet and stuff. But, you know, and I think, like you had, we had discussion on some of them took their insurance. And a lot of them, if they don't have their basement finished, it's just a little bit cleaner. The one lady uh, that I goes to my lioness club, she used to be a school teacher. I can't think of her name. But she had it, too. And she says, now it stinks downstairs. No, I lied. She didn't have it. That was from the, when the electric was off her sump pump. She had the, but and then I said, did you have the insurance? She said, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Jeff will stay in touch with you. Uh, come over to your property, check things okay. out, and then we'll move forward. All right. And like I said, I'm working on, you know, getting this stuff. It's, it's, it's stressful. Mm -hmm. We have these meetings every month, so next month we'll get an update from Jeff, and okay. he'll, he'll fill us in on what's been. All right. Uh, I don't know if I have a card with me, but. Um, I will get a card. I'll hook up with you. All right. Week. Sounds I'm good. I'm waiting for you to come back to me, too. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, another couple of you. Well, um, Dave Kaiser here. He has a public appeal. I think I can sort of summarize this and Jack can chime in. Kaiser is K A E I S. And the address? Uh, the address is, oh, that's a good one. It's 130 South 6th Street. But the property that is involved is going to be 615-617 Meyer Street. See, the property is three tracks, two parcels on one lead. Let's make it a little more 
Yeah. That's uh, all we need. I'm actually not picturing that, <laughs> that but I'll have to just go look at it then. Okay. Yeah, the, the house in the lot next door to the house on the corner, mm -hmm. face, uh, face six, the garage faces Miner Street. We did the Miner Shark Steel and die right there. Okay. The first garage right there that faces Miner Street, and then the alley is right behind it. Okay. I can't picture it, so I'll have to just go look at it. Okay. The days I'm just dealing with this for a little bit of detail. Oh, we can have it. I, I'll summarize. Do you want to wait for Jeff or is he already yeah, cleared? Right. Um, Dave on um, the property, which is your property, um, has a um, very old white oak tree. About 150 years old, I think, something yeah. like that. Big, big tree. Yeah. White oaks, they're, they're heavier than smaller than red oaks. And this was featured in like the morning call, right? Yeah. For two, let's go back two years ago, I think it was dealing with reds because it was in part of the Shade Tree Committee tree and he really liked this tree because I mean, it's a behemoth tree and it's like five, six foot across the bottom, like a hundred foot canopy on it. Wow. Okay, so it's a monster tree. So you know, I, I had got a, a work order from him to uh, to trim some of the branches. They were over the garage. I mean, this was over two or three garages. The neighbor's house was the alley. It's, it's, it's a, a mess. I mean, it's huge. Um, he wouldn't let me trim too much. He didn't want me to get too carried away with it. He said, just with a lopper's kind of like thing, you know. But I said, well, the branches are the size of trees themselves, you know. So uh, we left to go there. And then just about uh, two, three months ago, I contacted him again. I said, listen, I think that, you know, I'd, I'd like to do something. You know, went back into it again to see if I could do something else with it. And uh, it, it, nobody's fault, uh, but we just didn't get in contact with each other and, and you know, all these people, whatever. So we kind of put them to the wayside. Well, in the meantime, it cracked out the middle. The, I got a call from the mayor's police department that the neighbors heard this loud pop and they realized the tree cracked. And so then I went down there and I combed it off, caution taped it off because it was a public safety issue at the time. So the police said, so I've been, I've been keeping the cones up and keeping the caution tape across there. Now the, the, the back of my property or the, pro the property line there, the, the alleyway that is there, um, I, I never thought anything of it. You know, there was never a problem until the, the crack happened tree. Um, so I, I called my insurance company, they wouldn't do anything uh, until it damaged something. You know, um, I, I called PPNL, they sent out uh, their PPNL Forester guy. After the first guy came out, then their forestry division guy came out and they were there with Aspen and uh, they said, well, we're really responsible for trimming 10 foot around our, just our wire, right? So they cut off a couple branches, left them later in the yard and, and they left, okay? so. Uh, so that was that. So then I, I came down here. And I, I just didn't know what to what to do. I, you know, we trying to get this problem solved. Well, the tree is not actually on my property. It's just like right on the back property line there. And here's where the issue happens. Um, so then I came down and I asked him, you know, whose tree is it? You know, because I had tried. I had a, a Penn State arboriculturist out there to look at it. I, I mean, I've done everything I could to to try to solve you, this problem. Do you want it removed or just trimmed? Well, um, right now it needs to be taken. It is a, I mean, you got to imagine that this tree's monster. That it, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when this thing's going to fall. I mean, it's going to take out two or three garages. It's probably it's, uh, it's, uh, cords and cords full of oak wood. It's Maybe not, somebody would want to do it for firewood. I have tried everything. For firewood? I've tried everything. I, I, I talked to a, a ton of, uh, first of all, uh, all the people that I talked to don't really want to touch until they know whose tree it is. You okay. know, because now it's like not actually on my property, but now it's it's my responsibility. So I, I think. Well, let me explain that for you. Okay. Um, this is really good for you. He's a my grandfather's friend. Um, behind his his house is is a, a John street, street. Uh, yeah John Street, which was laid out but it never opened up. So it's grass. No. no. It's used as it's like a private access for the houses on Minor Street. Right. You see, my garage faces Miner Street, so I don't utilize the alley at all. Now, the alley goes behind the garage, but the next... Is it paved alley? No, it's not. It's a gravel alley. Okay. Gravel's not done anything. We've lost rights to it, according to Frank. Okay. Well, we, it, it's, it's paved down to the last house. We've provided no maintenance. No, no, no. Okay. According to Frank, um, we, because we didn't ordain and open up the street in 21 years of being laid out, we lost all rights. Plow it or something. Yeah. Okay. So that's so I mean really that's something we've never touched on. Correct. So the way it stands is um, um, 
Dave's position is that I think is that you know, he doesn't he doesn't want to, he doesn't know who owns that area. Frank's position is that the borough lost all rights to it, so therefore it becomes part of the property. The property. And if it's right on the middle of both property owners, it's not. Oh, it's, it's more to if you look at the well, it's not that center in the middle of the alley. It, it, oh. it, it favors so my side of the alley, but it's not the, on the, my the top. Part, uh, my borough ordinance is his responsibility. Yeah. It's in the right of way. It's on his side of the alley. The only twist in the whole thing is that a question about whether it's really even an alley. Either way, it's his responsibility. Either way, if you quite titled the property, the line would go down the middle, it would be on his property, or it's in the right of way. No the than street Either way, it's his it's responsibility. But here's, here's, here's the issue I see. And uh, the UC tree, um, this thing is huge. huge. I mean, it is a massive tree. Um, and the the single trunk goes up how far do you think, Jim? 20 foot. Uh, it's like brand new. Probably about 18 to 50 to 18 feet. And then it splits off. It's right there at the top of the split. It's split down for that long. Right, right. Um, Rez has looked at it and he is, he, he's written up a letter that he had wanted to sign yet that directs David and he has to have his treatment or mm -hmm. suggested on the shade tree ordinance um, that it is a hazardous tree and it should be. That warning, that basically, that it should be, um, and I don't think Dave disagrees with that. Well, no. It, my it's issue is, I was not allowed to touch this tree, and I've done everything I could. Go to the shade tree committee and, and the whole nine yards. You know, I tried to get these branches trimmed, and they wouldn't let me trim them back. You know, I think it had a lot to do with the, the award ceremony thing, which was just in November second, or whatever it's done. And they put their sign out there, and I guess he didn't want to see like, you know, mm -hmm. blunt ends or whatever chop up. So that's kind of, I think that's why. You know, it kind of got avoided that I didn't get in contact with him. You know, he was just not pushing off in a way, like for lack of a better word. So you know, it, so I mean, I was trying to deal with him. You know, and I, I can't say for sure if the amount of trimming I would have done would have prevented this thing from cracking or not. I mean, I did that. Nobody what are you, what are you asking from us? What is your actual appeal? I, every tree service I've ever what, I mean, I've been going to, they want to know. They want documentation on whose tree it is. Okay, Can now we provide that? it's not on my property, but I need documentation to say that. How could this tree all of a sudden became mine now? You see, I, I can give you something right that explains why we say it's your tree. Okay, well, I, I, need, I need something to show to you. I, I have multiple tree surfaces out there, and all kinds of people out there to look at it. Now, nobody even wants to deal with it. It's going to be astronomical. They, you know, we're talking well, crazy. Like crazy right? If somebody is paying, if you're, so if you're paying somebody to cut it down, what difference to them does it matter if it's here or there? If the uh, condition still stays well, the same. Well, I, I, think, I think what they're worried about is more of a liability thing. Because if, if, with one half, if, it, you know, if it's going to fall, it's going to take out. It's going to take out wires. It's going to be in the street. It's going to take out two garages. It's going to. I mean, it's going to take out a lot of stuff. But yeah, if that yeah. tree falls while they're working on it, they've now become part of the problem. Well, yeah, that's right. They don't want to. They so, don't I mean, they've, come and, they've come and looked at it. Yeah. And they, so what difference in their mind if they're giving you a price? Does it matter whether it's here or there? Who owns it or who doesn't own it? You're asking them to take the tree down. Right. Right. But my thing is, I, I, I didn't have any say over the tree at, at, ever. I've done everything I could with the shade tree committee. You know what I mean? I've done everything I could to try to get this thing trip back to prevent anything from happening. You know, and, and fine, you know. And, and I, you know, I, I, you call PPL you know, and tried to do everything to get, you know, anybody that could help get the, the tree out of the way and the wires and everything. And there's, I, I don't know any more that I could do. And I, I talked to quite a few tree services, and they're pretty much if, waiting if for it. If we provide that, if the borough provides a letter for you saying um, what, what, what you're asking okay, for, what, is, what, that, is that what, satisfying? What, no, because what confuses the thing even more now is I, I, I don't have a dime to throw at this tree at all. Okay, I, I'm in a real bad time well, right now, so I can't afford to take the tree. That, out. That's understandable, but the, right. your appeal is you're saying you can't get anyone to do it because you can't show who owns it, and if we provide that letter for you, at least that takes that's care of that, that which is what you're asking right. for. But I mean, when how, it gets taken it, down, is how was it? It, it was it, nobody, everybody was fine with this tree until the thing cracked. Then everybody took off. You know what I mean? And I tried everything I could to, to prevent this from happening to begin with. You know, and and, and I I like the tree just as much as everybody else did. Okay, and it was an unforeseen thing that happened here. Okay, and it's not. The way I look at it, I mean, I'm only paying taxes up to my property line, OK? 
okay? And I never got a letter saying that, hey, we didn't maintain the alley in the last 21 years, you now went to the middle of the alley. I've never got anything until the, the tree cracked. Now, all of a sudden, everything's mine. You know, now I own the middle of the alley, and now I've got a cracked tree in there, too. Yes. It's is my issue here. You know, it's, when I look at the tax map and everything, I mean, it's not even on my property. It just became mine in the last two weeks. Yeah, I mean, there's several places in the borough where alleys that were never deemed alleys. Um, there's one right where I grew up, behind Franklin, in between Franklin and 7th Street, there is an actual grass and behind coming off of Franklin Street coin that behind the houses on Harrison Street. Right. That is one of those situations where it was never used and each property owner I mean I know from growing up that that situation happened on our property. Um, right, most of those are grass like I see it in the yard that people actually that, follow up to each other's But it's paved behind Harrison the homes on Harrison Street. That part is paved. Well this part is paved all the way down about twenty foot short of the barricade, which is twenty foot short of the yeah, and that could have been done privately, and we don't know. Well, okay, that. well, I mean, I, I, so if I go and, and I block off that alley now because it's now mine, then, then everybody that accesses their garages from the alley is going to be knocking on your door tomorrow. You know what I mean? I, I'm just... Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I have no doubt that the tree is responsible. Okay. I'm convinced yeah, right, and, and I think know, I think the opposite it's, because it's, 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 it's not it, but the alley was never mine. I never got any documentation saying that this alley all should be mine. If you went up to see this tree, at least in my opinion, it's Reg's opinion too, and uh, Jeff, you see, I'm not going to say opinion, but it is. I think it's because of the size, it poses a direct hazard right now. To the bottom. Especially if there's ice coming or if something. This thing, if, if, right, if if this goes, thing would take a big windstorm. I on the really on the southwest side of it. I think the top of that could, if it falls, go through the houses across the way. Um, and if it doesn't go there, and it goes more towards the road, but PPL trimmed off, does nothing. No, okay, no. this thing's gonna rip down everything. Poles, wires, everybody's connection to other houses. If there's somebody walking down there, if there's a car there, it, it's a white oak tree, it's gonna take out whatever's there. And my concern, is what we should do with anything when there is this ha existing hazard. And even though we don't have a legal obligation to do it, should we do something? If he, he says he has no funds to do it, should the borough undertake something to try to protect the public? And bill him? And leave his property. Right. Okay, and here's, the, here's the next big thing. I have the property up for sale right now. I have it for sale. I have the price down to where I'm just breaking even on the thing. And, I, and I'm having trouble selling it, okay? Well, so we, we understand all those issues, right. but really, the, those issues don't really concern the borough, or the concern is the safety part of it. That's the, that's the right. only part I, I agree it's a, it's a public safety issue. So I just don't agree that's my tree now all of a sudden. I mean, I tried to get the maintenance for it, but... It, the issue of the alley, clouds it, in my opinion, it would, it's not your property. That's an easement for the person behind you. That's something that, as I explained to you before, you would share in some sort of a legal increment that would have to be drawn up. But right. even if it was, even if it isn't an active alley, by borough ordinance, and this is something that is, you know, all over the place, the trees, the sidewalk, the curb and gutter, um, you know, there are certain rules that are in this book that uh, you as a property owner um, absorb, and by borough ordinance, it becomes your right. responsibility. What yeah, but I was never, I, I was never notified of, of any of this happening. You know, I, I, did, I did, had no idea that, you know, that two weeks ago, I now own half the alley. It, you know, it, and I don't know, I mean, if those other people, I don't, I don't need the alley. I mean, I can access my garage from there, so I don't, I don't so it's care. So the alley? Yeah. It's in the alley. Well, it's, it's in the alley. I mean, if you yeah, if you were parked there, you would open your right hand door. You hit the tree. It's you know, in the right away of the alley. It's in the right away of the alley. Okay. Now, I mean, I don't know. Really I wouldn't care if they closed the alley. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't need it. But the, the people behind there, that their garage is facing the alley. So the, you know, the neighbors are going down Sixth Street. They access the garage from back there. Uh, you know, I've been trying to keep them out of there. I, I code it up. They keep moving the code with Taylor Carson tape down. And I keep putting it back up and. Yeah. Where, 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 where is that right now? Is, is I believe it is a serious 
threat to the public. Right. And I'm not disagreeing with that. Money what I'm stuff. saying, what I'm saying personally by my observations is it is not your property. It is still a borough alley on paper that has to be dissolved through some legal instrumentation like a quiet title proceeding among you and your neighbors. Right. And regardless of whether that happens or doesn't happen, it's still in a strip of land. It's a right-of-way called John Street by her ordinance which you are responsible for. Okay, but now we're looking at it because we have time so on our side until I have to go through it. all that situation and, and try to figure out who's what and, you know, and get out all that legal stuff done. We have a public safety hazard going on at the same time that's, it's pretty critical as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, I've been monitoring the crack here and it hasn't been, it, since I started watching this happen, it, it, only, it only went down about another foot maybe. But it, that means it's still moving. I mean, it is a fine, like, five well, minutes. Well, the water gets in there and starts freezing. Well, right. they, looked, they looked at it from a bucket truck when yeah. they were there. I had the guy go down and take a look at it. He said that there was, like, a, a hole that was in the middle of the, in the cross part of the tree. There was a hole in there, and that's where the rot started, I would imagine, and, and weakened the, it from the center. You know, now, I've tried everybody, uh, like, sawmills, to see yeah. if I can get somebody to be interested in, in boards that with. You know, I, I've done... I just wanted you. I just want you to know, Dave, because we right. spoke about this at length. Right. You're you're still confusing the issue. Um, there is no waiting on dissolving the property, or regardless of which, it's your responsibility. And and I think the thing that we spoke about before was I'm concerned that you're exposed libelously li li because right. if that thing falls, you know, you know, you've now been put on notice about it. And now, you know, well, I haven't even received, I mean, other than talking. We've been it. speaking for. Right, right, we've been speaking so for. Well, he means the letter from the shape. I, I really hope we've had verbal conversations conversation now for over a week and a half. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, that, that, that it is. is just, they, well, whether you knew about it or not, you're, you're not going to get around the fact that the trees are responsible. That, that, oh, okay, that's where I'm confused. That's okay, all but, I'm saying. It's not even on my property. Well, you, all you can do is, at this point, you're not going to convince me or anybody else at this table that you may question it. The fact is, is that you may question it. Nobody at this table ought to question whether it's your responsibility or not because it is. You, you okay. could I check with some legal, you could check well, with yeah, the legal, okay, okay. somebody legally, yeah. and you'll get the same answer. Right, but for the purpose of this meeting, okay, that's the way this issue is going to, going to proceed. The, the, this committee is going to assume, and I think correctly so, the tree's your responsibility. Right, well, I mean, that's not, you know, I mean, I understand that. That is not going to be an issue. But the, the issue of mine is I tried to prevent to this problem from happening. And Reds had stopped me. Wait, wait, wait. I want to hear what Fred's saying. The question that has to be decided is what to do, in my opinion, is what to do for public safety standpoint. Well, you've seen it. It's, it, it that thing goes, it it's is a lot of damage to the public. Okay. Not just because of the size, but due to the weight of it. It could be. Result in death. Now, oh yeah, death, you death. absolutely. Now, if they're, if they're, I think what to do is call a tree person to have them come in and give advice on what can be done. As I understand it, there are at least two things that could be done. One is entirely removed. Now, that's going to take cranes. It's going to be very, very expensive to do. You can also cable it. I guess another option is to try to stabilize it and then buy some time to try to then flush out what actually can be done. Okay, and what that means that. But I think the step number one is, I, and my recommendation to the committee is that we get somebody out, the borough go out there, get somebody to take a look at it, give us, give us advice on it, and whatever it costs the borough, we will put a window on the property. And that would come under budget wise. I have to look at where we take that from, but I think that under the circumstances, how much is some? It's just okay. Now here, I got I got some numbers for you. Yeah, I, uh, you did get estimates. Well, I, 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 well. I, I haven't got I got one written estimate, which I'll tell you in a minute. But uh, the, the Penn State Arbor Crossing is a friend of mine, uh, Ralph Woods, who's reading up the brown maintenance. Okay, he came down. He said that um, everybody's so busy now. The tree, tree work companies, I mean, they're so busy. They can't, you know, and, and they're not looking for the wood or anything right now. He said that um, for between five and six hundred dollars, he would go up there. He would deem the tree absolutely safe by uh, strategically placing cables, come alongs, and, and cabling and, and strapping the tree together to prevent it from falling. He said he could do that, and he could say that it's safe to buy time, you know, to, to make it not a public safety hazard anymore, and to buy time until everybody gets caught up to get the tree taken down. Then um, just uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, 
they were working right uh, right down the, the old Hershey's, where the beer distributor used to be the old place, but then the, the, this Tree of Life mm -hmm. place was, was working down there, and I asked them if they would come up and take a look at it. Well, they just faxed this to me today. This guy here, he is willing to, understand, he's willing to take the whole tree down and grind the stump out for $2,600. That yeah, because I, I talked to Chris Bell and he said, you're looking at five to $10,000. This guy here said he would do it uh, fairly quickly for that. I, mean, I thought that was great. I think that's something that we should jump all over. I don't have $100 to throw at this tree. So we could have him do that and put a lien on the property for $2,600? That's the best way to go. Everybody's covered uh, liability-wise. I think the tree needs to come down. The right, because yeah, there's no argument that there's it has no to come like down. down. I mean, it's no spending six, five, six hundred dollars for something you're going to take it down. Then. Yeah. Right. Well, well see, I was just, yeah. that that was prior to me running into this guy yeah. yesterday. I mean, I just happened to stumble across this guy. I mean, I just pulled in and talked to him. You know, and he he jumped on it right away. He came up right away and looked at it for me, and uh, he got that right to me. Probably you know. can get that much money in selling the wood then too. Well, he probably make a profit. Yeah, I'm sure. He, I'm, I'm sure. He, I'm sure he will. I mean, maybe that's why he's doing it for that price. Everybody else I talked to was like twenty five, ten thousand dollars. I'm hearing all kinds of numbers like that, which is isn't, you know, they're, they're, they're talking cranes and big bucket trucks and big chippers and all kinds of stuff like that. You know, I'm not going to understand that. So, I mean, I thought this was great, but I mean, so I mean, <laughs> everything that I've done to try to prevent this from happening and, and you know, the whole nine yards, I and but it, the whole confusion part of it, not even being actually on the property that I paid taxes on, the property that I just got, that I inherited now, that I don't even have any documentation on, you know what I mean? I, I was just... Uh, Dave, all I can say is, I, I know that's hard for you to believe, and this situation has come up occasionally, I mean, almost on a yearly basis now. Um, all I can say is, if, you, if, you, if you're not sure with it, check with somebody on the legal side of it, and you're gonna get the same answer, but it's gonna cost you money to find out. But I would suggest that get legal, legal well, counsel yeah, okay, on that issue. Well, I already touched into that. I was trying to prevent that from happening over the, the you know, from, from my point of view here, I mean, to come up with a couple hundred dollars to get an attorney involved, and I talked to Craig Bellis about this, who also had dealt with this a lot of times, and he said he has the perfect attorney for me, and he said he, he, he won most of these cases, and this and that, when it gets done. I just didn't want to drag it through that much, you know what I mean? Because he said to me, he's like, well, would you rather spend a couple hundred dollars with an attorney, or, you know, and have a chance of it, you know, at least having a 50-50 chance, right. or do you want to just go out and spend, you know, and have it, See, now I'm trying to, the house is for sale right now. You know, I can't, you know, I have to disclose all this stuff from happening. Now I'm trying to sell a house, you know, that I have at, you know, rock bottom price with a dilemma tree in the back and a one of the property things, line issue. One of the things that I have found frustrating over this day is that we've spent a lot of time together. And right. We've given you honest, uh, right. I mean, I we've given you honest advice. We've gone around and around, <coughs> and around over these issues over and over and over right, again. And we're still back to the point where, um, you know, it is by borough ordinance your tree. Unfortunately, that's some of the bad things of owning a property. Like it or lump it, that's where we're at here. So trying to continue with that is not doing anybody any good but taking up time. And so right. if, you is, don't believe that, if, you, that thing, if you don't believe that to be the case, then you need to go get a lawyer because you're going to get that same answer if you come back to every meeting. In the meantime, the thing should be a public safety hazard until I go through all this stuff. It's still, though, okay. Dave, okay. public hazard or not, it's okay. still, you're, right. I mean, as we spoke before, okay. well, I'm concerned because you're libelous. This, you're, this is on you. Okay. Because it, because the borough has the documentation and it is your responsibility. Right. And, and so if something you. happens, you're you're hanging out there. That's what I'm concerned about. I, but I, well, my point, I, I never ever got any kind of notification that that this I was mine. That I'm now responsible. That I now own it. Or I don't know if I own it. No, no, no one's trying to have more power on the back here. I'm I'm concerned about you personally. I'm concerned that you realize that this isn't going away. Right. And so by spinning your wheels like this, if this thing falls tomorrow. You're the one that's in primary and front seat here. This is by borough order. It's a possibility. Yeah, it's a possibility. So I, I'm, I'm concerned about that. Right, and, and I am too. But I, when it comes down to, I don't have the money. You got to put a meeting against a property that, I'm, that I have for sale. I mean, I don't know what that's going to be, where that's going to get it. I have for sale for cheaper than I owe on it. Just to get up underneath it, to put a lien on it, it's not going to do too much. Well, the bur I think, I think the, the borough, the borough is well. 
we all recognize it's a safety hazard. Right. But there's no way the taxpayers should pay and take your tree down in the end. Right. Okay. Well, fuck. I mean, we're just right. looking at it from two different points right. of view. It's just, it's just, it's, I, I did everything in my power to get this tree trimmed to prevent it from happening. And I have work orders from the shade tree committee that I did this. I've been dealing with friends on this for forever. And I was never allowed to touch the tree. Okay. Trust me, we feel for you. And, and this last storm, everybody has issues with trees. Uh, okay. Uh, I had lost half of my sycamore tree and it, it pinned right. my front door I, shut. So I mean, I, 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 have, my, I have 15 of them down my yard too. I, mean, I know that they're still like in there. I, I, I understand that. I was just trying All right. Well, we're going to move forward. We're probably going to end up calling this company to, to remove your tree and, uh, and put a lien on the property. And in the meantime, if, if you feel you're being slighted by the borough, you can go see legal counsel and, and take that route. I mean, sorry for that answer, but that's, that's the way the, the borough is not responsible for that tree. And that's, we're worried about the safety concerns, so we're going to take care of bringing the tree down before somebody gets hurt or property damage. And the lien will be put on your property. And uh, hopefully, I mean, you can sell your house and then move okay, forward. Okay, so what do I tell the, the realtor now? Okay. Well, you have to disclose that. I mean, it's, you have to disclose that. Right, I have to disclose. So what am I going to tell the potential buyers now that my back property line is now in the middle of the alley? Do I need a bot line? Issue. The buyer will do a title search, and whatever that title search discloses, they take it somewhere to whatever the title search is. Right, the title search is going to be the, to my property line okay. in, in the back. You apparently know a lot more about the title search than any of us at this point. Right, I have. All, I, all I know is that the buyer takes it subject to the title search. Okay, but and, 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 I have the explanation of the deed and everything about it. When they the accept, alley, that, if they accept the title, they accept the title search. Okay. And go ahead and sell it, they accept it, whatever it is. I wish you luck with the attorney. I mean, maybe you'll get okay. a different answer than what we're telling you, but uh, okay. we've been through this many times, right. and, and right. the answer is you're responsible for it, but maybe you'll find a different answer. Okay. All right. We're good. Okay. Any other public appeal? All right. Moving forward to old business. Um, First three, there's nothing really to talk about there. I'm assuming. How far are we on home inspections? Are we, are we almost finished with that? Or are we no, have 80 percent, 90 percent, 75 percent, 70 percent. So we're looking at maybe one more year or two years. Uh, probably not one more year. Probably into a second. Okay. Just so we have an estimate, or uh, we've got quite a bit of the town done. So one uh, estimate, one and a half to two years. Is that a good estimate? <coughs> Is there one specific part of town? Uh, um, that isn't touched at all, or you hit different parts? We have done, um, I think we have a majority of the center of town and part of the north side left, left to do. We, we have been methodically, you know, moving through town. Um, I would have to look at the map. The reason why I say that is because originally when the, start, when the project started off, if you remember, I had Katie Hoffman go through town and from the sidewalk look at properties right. that, that came up with 500 properties that, you know, the town stopped disappearing, where does it go kind of thing. Yeah, so we business, did that first. Is that the churches and all that are done too? Well, a, as we go through, they're done, yes. Yeah. Uh, and so I would, to give you an accurate answer on that, I would have to uh, study the map that was being kept. I think most generally what I'm telling you is it's in a majority of the center of town and a portion of the north side what, which still yet remains. What portion or how many number of properties have refused to let the inspection to happen so far? Do we have a number on that so far? Three. Three, okay. All right. All right, moving on. Uh, status of Weeder Lane, at our last uh, executive session, we made a decision to move forward on that. Has that even been redrafted the letter? And then where are we getting the well, we have to come up with property owners, 
and you and I were speaking about we're trying to ascertain all the owners. Okay. Um, Can we have a letter or that taken care of before our next GA meeting? For the 14th? Yeah. Yeah. Have it done by the 14th, and then we can look at the letter at the GA meeting. The, 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 it doesn't have to be here. I mean, the quantity right came out of this is we can get our addresses from our tax, the portion of the roadway that's in the borough. Right. But there's some properties outside South the borough that we don't have tax maps. So right. okay. We're trying to work that out. All right, well, let's moving forward. Uh, South 2nd Street Reservoir, I'm sure that hasn't changed. No, we had this last storm, we had the same thing happen. The branches fell down, ripped, it, ripped all the wires out, ripped the, the, you know, there's an electrical service up there to operate that uh, altitude valve. Um, but there still is the issue of, you know, the vulnerability of that structure. And, you know, we really need to think of trying to dispose of it in some way. Any update on Cintas? Uh, no, we're waiting on them to um, finish their final report for us to review, and they have okay. given us that. 20, uh, 226 Pine Street, the, uh, you're doing the... Uh, I have gotten the video, got right. my, you got my memo about right. the cost. So that's going to move forward. We um, looked at the sewer um, uh, I, &I money this year. There is going to be $3,000 right. left over. Um, and so we're going to proceed with that okay. and I'm trying to get that scheduled before the end of the year. Okay. I'm just trying to, trying to get it fit in. Um, South 10th Street, Culver, any update on that or is it pretty much the same? Well, um, it is still, you know, I, I don't believe $5,000 in the budget is the way to go. Yeah. I, I don't it. believe spending $5,000 to, to analyze that is, I think we need to come up with a plan. I don't think we can pay somebody five thousand dollars to do that. Um, the cost of that structure, you know, repair or replacement could vary from you know one fifty to five hundred thousand. Um, it is um, you know something we do need to work into the budget, and we do need to try to repair. Um, um, All right. What's so the priority on it? Well, urgent. Is it, it is five, something that needs to be within replaced. five years, ten years, it's one year? It needs to be looked at within the next year. Uh, it, it is something that uh, needs to be looked at very soon. And the other question is, Jeff, can our, uh, our guys able to do all the construction there? Um, I know it would take a, longer, but... It is a size project that um, with the permitting that's going to be required for that, uh, that's part of the problem we have to do. It's, it's an active waterway. Uh -huh. We have to have uh, pin D searches. We have to have historical. We have to get a permit. Mm -hmm. There have to, it, it, it's going to be a very convoluted uh, paperwork sort of project. Uh, essentially, it's removing the old structure and putting in a new one. If that's what you do, or fix the old one, um, I would say no. I would say that it is a job that needs to be gone in and done immediately. And based on you know we get pulled off and do this and do that, I don't think we can do that on this particular street on this particular project. It's not necessarily complicated, right? Um, but unfortunately, as things go, if we if we go to that, as soon as we go to that, something you know the wheel's going to fall off the bus over here. And now we got to go over here, and we can't be here. And I, I don't think it's the place to do that. I was just thinking of like prevailing wage and, and well, wage, you, know, you are like going to have to have that, yeah. but. Um, Worst case scenario, we don't have money and the road closes, the bridge closes. I mean, that, uh, realistically, that would be the worst well, case scenario. If, if it got to that, it's not It's not at that point, but I'm saying it is, the culvert is distressed. It needs to be repaired. It's causing some settling on the roadway, and, you know, it's something that we need to be okay. looking at. Is there any new business? Um, Sure you're going to have a Christmas tree. No, there. I hope you next year, but it's, yeah. it's future now. Oh, yeah, I understand. That. Do you want my Here's my question about that, Brent. Do you want a tree that size? That's 60 years. No. So my whole thing is, plus, my personal opinion on it is, you know, pretty bad use of our resource to cut down a tree like that for this function. It's a waste, I think, my personal thing. Huh? And you can, after Christmas, 
get an artificial tree, 60 to 75 percent off it. It looks absolutely awesome. Pre-lit, pre-decorated. You hang the thing up. It looks beautiful. You can pick up a tree for three to five grand. I'm not disagreeing with any of that. But when this plan came through, and I was the center on this, I wanted to plant another tree so that we would have one permanently. I was on the losing end of that. But when that whole process happened, the public was promised that we would always have a live Christmas tree, and that was set on this floor by several people. And I was like, okay, that's fine, but we may get trees. It's exactly, it went where exactly where I thought it would go. I'm not against a, uh, an artificial tree, but I am against saying something to the public, a promise from this borough council as a body, and not following. What through. about what about rethinking planting a live tree there? That's not out of the question. Yeah, that grass area. I mean, there's a, there's enough room to plant a tree there. Sure, um, And just maintain when it gets yeah, to a size. Well, I was talking to Reverend Forrester yesterday, actually, and, and he told me that that other tree that was there, the reason why it turned out so ugly is it got hit by lightning, and that's what caused the two or three shoots, which made it turn into the pickle for the book. It was horrible, that tree. Why did you bring it up? I think because of, it's going to be a topic from here until the end of the holiday season. Yeah. I know it's on the GA uh, yeah, agenda. So it's just worth people talking about. I just, I just wonder about, you know, planting a, the, the, the whole, you know, it, it, it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of, you know, it, it, I'll tell you what, we've been looking for months and we didn't even think we had one. It took three years and put a new one in there. It was a struggle to find this one, so. I want to apologize to you for speaking up and what went on. We have spent a tremendous amount of time with him. I, I think you were trying very, very hard I, to. I think everything was fine. I mean, I know Dave, and, and, and you know, I. He, What's he got? I mean, I can un totally understand him. To come up with, to find out that, you know, it's a tree that you're responsible for is 2600 or whatever amount. I mean, he was like, estimating five to $10,000. Anyhow, I, I totally understand where he's from. So, well, we're gonna try to get hold of the ACP. Oh yeah, like tomorrow. Yeah, if they can do it for that <laughs> amount, that that's amount. Amount. Uh, Just so you know, too, about the um, issue with the permit from the Shade Tree Commission, he had got a, he had spoken to Reds a year ago maybe, and wanted to do some pruning, pruning. because the branches were in the wire. And Reds gave him a permit for pruning. Basically, the pruning meant, you know, four or five feet. And he was, I think, okay with that. And it appears now that he's kind of using that restriction as the reason why the tree crumbled. But if he got the permit, why didn't he do the pruning? I don't know. Here's a cutscene. He just pulled that out. All right, let's I thought I was supposed to be on the docket here. Four months. What's that? I was supposed to be placed on the docket here. I even had emails sent around that I was going to be placed on there. I had questions. Personal appeal. Yeah, personal appeal that I was going to be. Wait, 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 are you talking about the water meter? Yeah. I had, did you call Kathy and get put on the agenda? I talked to uh, Craig. Oh. I think you know Brent. I mean, oh. You're here, John. I mean, oh. We're going to talk about it. All right. We'll put you on a new business, and you can come up and present. Okay. Usually on your personal appeals, though. Well, I thought no, I'd no, be no. placed right on the no, agenda. No, he was wanting to. He was wanting to be put on the agenda to talk about the multi-unit service. That's fine. Oh. Okay. Okay. Sorry, John. That's misunderstanding. I, I did get an email saying you wanted to speak, but that's why when you didn't come up for public. I just, I just thought you didn't want it. Just thought I was going to be placed right on the agenda. Okay. Well, you're under new business now. Do that though. Just for clarification. Under new business, and you place one. Okay. okay uh, make a motion to re-adjourn. Unadjourned. I made the original motion, so I will make a motion to amend my motion. We are not adjourning. <laughs> yes, and I'll second that. No, I'll second that. How much did you adjourn? Okay. It never well, we're on the camera, so we can't really do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, anyway. Go ahead. I just had questions as far as the multi-unit charge that's put on, on for uh, apartment dwellers, residents, whatever. And just had a question. For 
For water? Water or sewer? Water. Oh, I guess it would be water, not sewer. Can, can I jump in here? Because yeah, I, yeah, had, I had spoken to John on the phone. And I told him that it was very hard to explain this on the phone. Okay. And I told him that, you know, it really is something that has to be shown on paper to make sense. Okay, sure. Um, I think your first thought was is that the multi-unit service fee was done so that the people who use more water could pay less. That was kind of one of the things you had mentioned to me. Um, but let me tell you, the rate structure was set off at one to 40000 That encompassed most of the uh, residential and commercial usage. As things go, you buy one thing, you pay this much. You buy two things, you get a lesser price. The, the, the more water you use, the price drops, and it's only cents. It's hardly nothing. But that wasn't the reason why the multi-unit service fee was adopted. In an effort to try to keep the water rates as low as possible, they adopted the fact, and it's a very simple way to look at it. If you had, if you had 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you had 10 apartments, if you have 10 apartments, and let's just say that the total amount of water used for those 10 apartments was 100,000 gallons, okay? That would be 100,000 gallons. Your bill, and they only had one meter. The bill for those 10 apartments would be 1355 for the water meter and 100 times a dollar 95 because of the 100,000 gallon increments. So let's to make the math simple, let's just call it two dollars, okay? Mm -hmm. So so it's so it's two times a hundred, so that would be two hundred dollars, okay? So it's two hundred dollars for the water and thirteen dollars, and to make it easy, let's just call it fifteen. Fifteen. That's two hundred and fifteen dollars total water bill. When you divide that by 10, that means that for the apartment user, he's paying $21.50 a quarter, okay? If you then compare that to 10 houses that are doing the same thing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and they each only use 10,000 gallons apiece, but they also have a $13.55 user fee. That same person owning a house would pay would be ten thousand gallons, right? Mm -hmm. So let's use the same two dollars. It'd be twenty dollars, right? What's but thirteen fifty-five, which in this case we run it to fifteen. Now this guy's paying thirty-five dollars mm -hmm. for the same water that this guy's getting for twenty-one fifty. Mm -hmm. So by adding eight dollars to his unit, and that was really a, merely a number we played around with to try to make it balance. It brings his bill to twenty nine fifty, being making it a little bit closer to being fair. Okay. And as this number goes down into lower units, the numbers change. And it, and what I think council thought of when it was going on was like a guy that has two units and doesn't want that condition or three units, then we provide the meter and the meter horn free of charge and you pay someone to redo your plumbing so each unit would have a meter and then you do away with that versus the people with more units that um, they wouldn't be able to do that to. It would be too costly. So, but that was honestly why it was done, as I remember it, mm -hmm. was a way to keep the water rate low and to try to keep the usage kind of fair between the... It has to be fair, yeah. That, that was why, at least what I remember why it was being done. But I, I, I couldn't explain all this to you on the phone um, because it's just, you almost have to see it laid out on paper. Okay, but that would pertain to large units. Pertains to anybody. It could be a two-unit apartment. Yeah, but most of the places, the high-rises, Meadow, Indian Creek, one down here, anybody that they say has about 13 people brings it to a volume where you can get a volume discount out of the two. But that, no, because that's only if you have one meter. And let yeah. me tell you that the rates, and I don't have them with it's me, like, it's like an you know, the, the rates for a 40,000 yeah, gallons are $1.95. When it goes to it's over 45, it's no, over $1.95 per thousand gallons up to 40. Over 40, the next half a million gallons, okay, is a dollar eight. 
Okay. Which so actually it makes it even more reasonable to do that. Uh, but again, examples of places I have are two units. Okay. Four people, one meter, just like a house next to you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much water to use, I can't find that out, but anyway, one meter, four people, or a house next to me, one meter, four people. But the people that live in my house get the privilege of getting 16 bucks at it. They also get a separate garbage bill because there's a separate family there. It's a separate unit. Yeah. And so that is the reason why that was decided on, at least as I know of, to way to get away from that, split the water on, put in a second meter, and we're done. And then the multi-unit fee goes away. And we pay and then you're paying thirteen fifty for each versus thirteen fifty and, and, and now you're paying now that's, actually, that's the point. Would that's you lower it down? It's actually cheaper it right now than if you had two separate units. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying, John. If you take that if here's and we can do it with two units if you want to do it with two. If you have two units and they're both using ten thousand gallons, let's just use that same number. That's twenty thousand gallons. Okay? Yeah. Twenty times two is forty bucks. Okay. One meter. $13, round it to 15, that's $55. Divide that by two, that's 27. No, it's not. 27.50 would be 50. No, yeah, 27.50. So each place is paying 27.50, okay? That's with no multi unit service fee, okay? Add eight bucks on each of them, and they're paying 35.50. So each place with the multi unit service fee. You're paying thirty-five fifty. Separate those two units, and each of them using ten thousand gallons. That's twenty bucks for the water for the one. Okay, plus another fifteen. It's thirty-five bucks. You're right there. So it's going to be. That's why we use that right number to try to make it fair. That was why, because there was, as I remember, there were several iterations, weren't there? Oh yeah. We tried seven. We tried six. We tried nine. We were trying to make it to where when you got down to this point. That it was almost equal. And then we took the, a the averages that we had in terms of usage. And, and but that was what I was concerned about because that's hard to explain over the phone like that. John, it's not, not going to change, but you always have the option to make them single units versus a multi. Like the, play, like the bigger places, you know, there's no, I think we, we talked, there's no way for them to put a meter in each one, but, it, but it's a wash, really. Uh, if you had a separate unit with a separate meter, the, the two unit is your worst, your absolute worst condition. As far as, I mean, it's not worse, but your but closest comparison. Four people, one unit. It's but it's not, it's not a matter of people, it's, it's a matter of people. flow. It's a matter of consumption. Use, yeah, it's the same. Consumption's not different, the flow, we're using a three quarter inch Meter right, for right. We can't base it on people because then we have people coming in and say, I am, I'm only one person living in a house. It doesn't base, it's not based on that. It's based on how much water you use. Yeah, I mean, you, you, well, you're paying you for water you use. Right? Right? Everybody's, Everybody's paying for the water they use. Go back to the quarterly meter range. That's, that's just flat. That's before you start using the water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Under what you're saying, um, like my mom, you live by yourself. And uses 100 gallons of water a day, I'd be shocked. Then she couldn't be able to come in and say, look, I'm only using this much, so therefore I shouldn't have to pay that quarterly meter rate because I use less. I'm not saying anything about using volume. You pay per volume based on volume. And you got to have a meter to measure that and flow. And you have a meter to measure that flow. But it's only one meter with For one two unit, and, and when units are combined, it is a way to... Equalize it financially as what, best as possible. What are you asking for us to re remove the multi-use no, charge? If there, I guess if there's more than two people in the house, put two meters in or something. Well, you have, have that option. What, you have that option. I mean, in a house. This is a business, so they're getting. They have to pay more to get the same thing. I mean, it's an existing house. Possibly they were they were converted before I even had them, so that's how it was. And then all of a sudden, this was thrown in on it. You're using the same volume based on the same amount of people. Well, I, so I if you have four people in a house or four people in an apartment, 
one meter supplies the same thing and it meters all the volume. So we understand what I'm saying. It's just that this this committee, I mean, uh, that change was just made within the last five years, I would say. I, I, all I know so is what, when it, what I, I mean, want to explain to you. get more revenue. <laughs> no, we thought it would make it fair. We didn't think it was fair. People in, uh, in apartment complexes were paying for one hookup. Yeah, they were paying less. How were they paying less? Because they were paying for one hookup when they have, they couldn't but have they're paying based 10 to 15 on units on one. Have. Which I'm, and it's, I guess we're not going to agree on this. Volume I guess, they, I guess we're not going to agree on this, but that's the way it is. Yeah. You have the option to make them single units, or you have the option of keeping them multi units and, and paying the extra $8. Is it $8 for each additional unit? Mm -hmm. yep. So, I mean, those are your choices, and that's the way it is. Well, then I'll have to talk to all the other apartment owners, I guess, to see if they can't come Sure, but I mean, when we went through this, it's not fair. when we went through that whole process, there wasn't a one apartment owner here. Well, it's like everything else. They never put enough out there, I guess. Now I, I'll go out and I'll talk to the 1,100 well, people the that are in the Well, they are already aware system. of it when they started getting charged and nobody came. Well, I'll change that, I guess, then maybe. Okay, John. Because I think it should be based on volume, and that's it. Hey, I'll, just, I'll just say finally that um, I am 100% satisfied I've been through the process of developing this ordinance that it is the most equitable way to charge people for water in this borough as between property owners who have, have one meter per unit, have multiple units, one meter for those who have every every unit meter. It is, as Jeff said in his math, this is the most fair way to do it. If John feels he's being victimized, he has his own perspective. But I'm satisfied, and I mean, Jeff was in the committee that killed the structure is satisfied that it is clearly, the reason that Jeff stated, the most equitable financial way to handle water. And if we revert back to the other way, water rates will go up and everybody will pay more who have single the units, units versus the multi units. What I see is that the, the, the property money. owner and the multi units are actually getting a break compared to the homeowner. Yeah, they are still getting a break. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. Still getting away from water break. Yeah, I, I mean, see how it's a break just because you're using the volume. Well, now I'm paying more than your tenants are, and it's same volume. Paying thirteen fifty versus your second unit is only paying eight. So how's that fair to me? So I want to break. I'm, them. I'm paying thirteen fifty, say on one apartment. Yeah. Four people living there, taking their volume, whatever it is, and they're paying on their volume. Uh huh. The house next to me, one meter, four people. Paying on their volume, we're paying the same. Now, now we're paying more. The pro that property owner is paying more. How? You're saying that's one house and that's a multi unit. Right. Yeah, we're paying more. They have one meter okay. here and one meter here. 13, 15 bucks, 15 bucks. Paying on volume, <coughs> paying on volume. Now all of a sudden, this one, the apartment, is getting charged an extra 16 bucks on top of that. Just because. Yep. Oh, we're, we're saying these four people are different than these four people. Well, I'm gonna this volume is different than this volume. One request. Is it, John, if you believe that the mathematics as they currently exist work out that you as the apartment owner and your tenants are getting screwed as compared to a neighbor, if you can show me on paper mathematically why that is, I'd love to see it. Okay. And, that, and that would be the best way to show this commitment. No, no, not, not now. Not right now. I'll do it right now. No, you're not going to do it right now. Sure. No, because this meeting is no. getting ready to adjourn. Yeah. You, All you, of a sudden. You, you put it together in writing and show it to, to us. I think it would be interesting to see how you think that mathematics adds up that gets through. Okay. Okay. Just like I said, here's one, here's one. Four people paying the same. One meter volume for everybody. But this one all of a sudden is paying 16 bucks more. You have more tenants? Better. Yeah. You, you moved the cost to the tenant. Well, that doesn't make a difference. They're still paying more than... Well, everybody in the people. apartments have to pay that. Well, why are you different than all the apartments? I, mean, I don't want them to be different. That's the thing. Okay, well, John, we're going to disagree, and you're going to have to okay. do what you're going to do. And all right. If you get people here, that. the answer is going to be still the same. I will do that. 
Okay, thank you. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor.